Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements project, we're going to be colorizing part of a black and white image, adding color into a black and white image. So here's our original image. Let me just show you this. I'll pull this down, just kind of minimize that. There we go. So the original image is right there. And let's just get this to fit on screen. So just a straight black and white image, and we're then going to add color to just part of that image. Now this is different from some of the effects over here on the guided edit. Now they have a black and white section. You know, highlight a single color in your photograph. Now what this is doing is it's taking a color picture and just leaving a certain color to make it a black and white. That's not what we're doing. Let's just back out of this. We'll cancel that one. Or you can, over here, again, this is taking a color image and converting just part of it to black and white. Again, not what we're doing. What we're doing is actually taking an actual existing black and white image and adding color back into that black and white image. It's a pretty straightforward process, and I'll show you how that is done over here. It's relying mostly on making a nice selection around what you want to colorize. And we'll then colorize that using the hue, saturation, and a couple of other little tricks. The most important part of this whole process is the selection that you make around the object. So that's where we'll start. I'm just going to come up here and delete all of these layers. And we'll start right from scratch again. There we are, the very, very beginning. I now want to zoom in on our main subject here. You can come in pretty tight if you want to, but starting off we can just be out just a little bit like that so I can see the whole thing on the screen. Now this is my favorite technique for doing this kind of a selection. I'll start with a rough selection and I'll grab the lasso tool over here and put it on new selection, anti-aliasing. And I'll just come in and just kind of roughly come around the object like this. Just, just a real rough little little selection. Nothing very dramatic about this. And it's worked my way around. I don't want to actually be touching the image, but I want to be relatively close to it. And then we'll be adjusting this after we have this done. And we'll just come around like that and finish that off. So there's our basic selection. Now, once you have a selection made, we're going to be refining the edge of this. Now, if you are working in Photoshop Elements 14, which I have here, there's this Refine Edge button there. And this just brings up the Refine Edge dialog box. Now, you can also do that exact same thing up here, Select, and Refine Edge right there. That just brings up the Refine Edge dialog box. Now, there are lots of ways of using this. You can have the program try to come in and actually find where the edge is of the little smart radius thing. I've never had a whole lot of success with that. So I try not doing that one. My little test just then showed me that this is just not going to work. You also can adjust the edge. I can smooth the edge of my selection out in here or I can soften the edge of the selection. You see there's softening going on. I can increase the contrast of the selection. I can shift the edge a little bit. None of these is really going to get me what I want. But what will work is this tool right there. This is the Refine Radius tool. Now what this does is you go in, you zoom in, and then you tell Photoshop Elements where you want it to look a little more carefully to find an edge. And it then tries to do that edge for you. Now we can do that by zooming in. Click on the Zoom tool right there in the Refine Edge box. I'll zoom in on the edge. Now, this may not work perfectly, and 
If it doesn't, that's fine. We can always adjust and we will be adjusting later. So I'll start with that. Now notice we have this circle with a plus inside. What I want is to have that plus inside of my area where I want to have it in the mask, which is the red part, and then overlap that circle into what I want protected, what I want shown right there. So in this case, I'll be putting that plus right down just outside of the edge of this stuffed animal, just like that. And then as you can see, Photoshop Elements comes in and finds that edge for us. If you want to move this, just hold the space bar down, and it gives you that hand. You can then just drag that up. Okay, let's continue on down here, and we'll see how well this does. Now, it's not going to be perfect. You see right here, it's coming into the fur a little bit. It's because there's very little contrast difference between those edges. We'll fix that. And it came in a lot there. We'll fix that as well. But we'll go ahead and let this do the best job that it can. And that will take care of a lot of the problems for us. And then we'll just clean up what needs to be cleaned up afterwards. And it's just a matter then of just going down, holding the space bar down, and repositioning and a little bit of painting along the edges just like this. And just continue on until you finish. Now it's really messed up down there. No problem. We will be cleaning that up. And using an, an easy technique for doing that as well. Now if you're just having a hard time, doesn't really know what I'm trying to do there. Again, that's fine. Doesn't matter. Just go ahead and continue on around. And we'll let this do a good part of the work for us. Now in here, we get into where I really want to be using this, and that's in the fur on the edge. Now, it, again, this is not going to be perfect, but it's going to be, hopefully, a little bit better for us. If it's not, that's, again, it's okay. None of these tools are perfect on any of these programs, especially Photoshop Elements, so you do what you can with it. But there are ways of getting around that. Where it has a nice edge like that, it's a very good tool. It can really grab that, but it needs to have a really distinct edge to work well. If, if there isn't a distinct edge, it's not that good at doing this. Okay, just around the hand right here. Now you can come down here to the eraser tool, and you can actually erase back in, and this restores the image where you've erased. This is our first bit of repairing some of the spots where it's coming in too much. Now, I'm using this red mask. This is the one that I happen to like the most over here. You can do it with the marching ants if you want to, the overlay with the red mask, put it on black, on white, black and white, on layers. You know, whatever you happen to like, I just happen to like using the overlay, so that's what I'm working with. Okay, I'll just keep this now and go back and forth between these two tools. the eraser and the paint. Right now I'm using the eraser to clean up this edge and get us a lot closer to a perfect mat. So you saw what I did there was I did the outside first and then I'm now coming back in doing the inside. Now if you need to change the size of your brush you can do that right over here where it says 35. So I can make this you know, smaller or larger. For me on this picture, 35 actually works out very, very nicely. It's a good size for this particular shot. Okay, couldn't even find anything there, and that's fine. And we'll just continue on down here. And come a little bit out of that, that edge down there, try to catch that edge of the, the tail. Now the more time you take on your mask, the better it comes out, the better this is going to look. I'm doing this relatively quickly. I take more time on this for a carefully finished piece. But this will show you the whole technique. So don't try to rush through on the selection. Take your time and do a good selection. Okay, we're just, just about back around to the stuff. And then we'll, we'll do another pass 
on this fix using a different technique in just a little bit here since we get this stuff taken care of. And just kind of getting rid of some of that show through in there. And we're good up here. All right, a little more. Let me see if I can catch that area in there. Not to. All right, so we can now zoom out. And there's the basic mask. Now there's some spots right here, over in here, right down there, right here, a little bit in the hair up in here, a little bit up in there. The hand may be a bit that still need more work. We'll do that on the next step. So now I have this done. This is our first pass at this. Output to new layer with layer mask. And choose OK. There we go. Here's our new layer with our layer mask. So now we can see the image on a transparent background. And that's right there. Now the layer mask, as you can see here where it's white, white is showing the stuffed animal. Black is hiding the picture. So black hides and white shows. And using that, we can zoom in on this and clean this mat up. I see right in here needs a bit of cleanup in there. To make it easier to see, what I like to do is to put a layer underneath of this and either make it black or white depending upon what I need. This is mostly light stuff, so I'll make this black. So I'll just fill this layer with black. There we go. So I can now see all that stuff that's showing through. Easy enough. Okay, we'll be working over here. Click on the matte side, the layer mask side. Make sure you see that blue outline. We now know that we can work on this and I can paint black onto the mask and it will hide this stuff. It looked like I'm just painting black onto the picture, but I'm not. I'm painting black onto the mask. So, get our paintbrush. Check our size. It's pretty small. Now, I'm going to zoom in on the edge and do a nice job on this. And you want to have a soft brush. So I'll go to 13 right there. The smaller the brush, the smaller the fade out on the soft edge. And I'll just come in here and just kind of work just right along that edge. And I want to come in enough so that my fade is, is just about the same as that. See, it's kind of just slightly out of focus along that edge. I want to use this to paint along that edge and get that exact same effect. A larger brush size is going to make it a bigger fade out. This brush size is pretty good for this. And then out here I can just come out and paint over that stuff. Now same trick as before, hold the space bar down to shift the picture. And then I'll continue on around and we'll do as much as we can on this pass just cleaning up this outside stuff and cleaning up that edge. Once that's done, then we're going to go back and do a little bit of fancy cleanup. Again, this is, is the most important part of this whole process. If you get this right, then the job will look great. If you get this wrong, it's going to look phony. So this is where all the work is. The coloration is easy. That just takes just a moment. That's nothing. The actual work is right here on creating this careful layer mask. You can use any technique you want to, any technique that you like to make your layer mask. If you don't like using the refined edge tool, you want to use a different technique for that, that's perfectly fine. You know, use whatever technique works out best for you. I'm just showing you my personal approach to this kind of a process. Okay, and I'll just continue on around with the bottom of the tail right now. And you see mostly I'm just trying to get rid of the stuff outside here. Now we're going to be colorizing the image that is shown by the layer mask, so I don't want to have any of this outside stuff getting any of that color. Okay, around the bottom end down here, and just, again, moving around. Whenever you see the image move like that, I've held the space bar down. It's like the space bar, and then a move and then spacebar. As you recall, I had a hard time finding anything up here, so I'm just going to kind of tap that up into that area there. 
and that should be okay. And just continue on around doing this, this process. Now I know it takes a while, but sometimes that's what you have to do for a good project. Just need to take your time and approach it carefully. Okay, we're coming around to the other side over here. Now on this side, we're going to be getting up to that area of fur. There's a lot of fur around the stuffed animal's head. And that's going to take a special approach. You can see we're coming up to it right now. There's that fur. So two passes on this. I'm going to do just a first pass this way and clean up as much of this outside stuff as I can. And then we're going to come back in and fake in a little more of a fur effect into that on a second pass. We're just about just about done here. Coming up around the side of the head at this point. And then we're going to be getting up to the top of the head, which was just fine. And then we need to clean up around the girl's hand. There's a little bit of a problem around the girl's hand as well. I want to touch up on that and make sure that that was okay. Now the nice thing about doing this with a layer mask is that I can always go back and modify and adjust this. It's completely controllable and completely repairable very easily because the picture is still sitting here completely in the background. Okay, here's that top section so the refined edge couldn't find this at all. You can see how close that was. So I'm just going to do this by hand just like that and then we'll clean up that top section. There's the girl's hand right there. So let's just come in and take that as well. Couldn't find the girl's hand, but that's okay. We can do that very easily. And that's going to be the end of this second part of the process. All right, let's zoom out just a little bit. Hold the Alt key down, come out just a couple of notches. And let's take a look at the hair over here on the side. Now I want this to be a little a little nicer looking than that and we're going to fake this with a pencil tool. So let's go to our pencil tool right down here. Let me check our pencil size. Now the pencil tool is a hard edge. I want real small one pixel maybe maybe two pixels in here I think and we're using black so I'm still I'm still working in here with the mat on the right hand side. Now you can see how this looks, see if it works out for you. It's coming in a little hard edged on that. So let's switch over to the paintbrush. Same thing, let's come down real small, again come down to about two and this should give us a little bit of a softening on that edge. That's going to work. And I'm just going to come in here where I have these little, little light spots. I'm just going to paint in and fake in a little bit of that softness back into the edges here of the hair. Now we're really in tight right now so this is going to look fine once we zoom back out again. And these are all just going to be showing some of the original image through. Those little areas where there's a little bit of, of, of see-through on this. And the only real trick on this is just to try to be kind of loose about it. Don't be too careful, too detailed. If it's, if it's looking a little bit sloppy or, or rough, that's actually going to work to your favor. It's going to be more natural looking. If you're too careful, it's going to look forced. If it looks forced, it looks fake. So it's really pretty, pretty loose, just kind of freehanding that stuff in there. Now, of course, remember, we're working right back onto the same picture, which is also going to help. I just want to, to soften up a little bit of the edges in here. So where this is, is blocking it out, we're going to be having black or black and white, rather, colors of that underneath. And we'll have the colored on the top, and then it'll fade into black and white around this edge. It'll look very, very natural. 
I just wanted to just thin this out in a few spots like that. That looks pretty good. And that should do it. Okay, now let's see how we're looking. There's a little bit of a light spot. There it is. Light spot right in here where we can actually see some of the background in it. I didn't want to do that. Let me just undo that brush. There we are. And let's just take out this little bit of square. A spot between an arm and a leg is kind of showing through the background area. So just a little bit of that out like that should be fine. All right, let's zoom out now. And that finishes off our mask. You see it looks really nice. If I hide this and show the picture, perfect. So I'll leave that picture on. Now we're going to colorize this image up here. Double click on that to go over onto the image side. And we're going to do a hue saturation color shift on this part of that image. Only thing on this layer that's showing is just that. You can see it right there. So it's the only part that's showing. All right. Enhance. Adjust color. Adjust hue saturation. We're going to add color into this picture by clicking on colorize. So that gives us color. There it is. We have our color. We now can adjust the hue, which is the color value. Right about right about in there somewhere looks pretty good. You can adjust your saturation here, a little more saturation. And you can adjust the lightness a little bit. Maybe about like that. And it's colorized. It's that fast. That's why I said this part is quick, this part's easy. The hard part is that mask. Okay, we have that colorized. Choose OK. Now, if you want to go a little bit further on this, we can add a little bit more color in here to this part. Make this a little bit more interesting. Now, also, if we zoom in down there on that fur, you see here we now have some black and white showing in there and some color showing in. I may have gone a bit too far on this part of it. That's easy to fix. That's back over on the mask, and that's black on the mask in here. So I can come back in and paint white. Let's reverse our colors. Paintbrush. I'll bring the size up a little bit. And paint white into it in here. We want to bring that fur back in again. So we're able to go back and forth on this until we get it exactly where we want it. So again, white into the white area to show the image black on the outside to hide the image. And let's just go along the edge. It looks good here. That looks good. Maybe a little bit right in there. That looks good. A little bit there and there. Okay, that's that's fine. All right, let's now zoom out again. And last little touch, let's add some color into his fur up here. And we'll do that by adding in more saturation onto this. Now if you want to do this as a separate layer, that's fine. So I'm going to take this layer, pull it up to the New Layer button, copy that, I'll hide this. That saves this one in case I want to go back to that. If I don't like this effect, I can always go back to that one. So that's now saved. Okay, we're up here. We're on the image side of this layer. Go over to the Sponge tool and choose Saturate on the Sponge tool. Now you want to have the flow down pretty low. Mine's down at 17%. And then choose a brush size. You can kind of see the brush size. There it is. And we're just going to paint over the hair. It's going to take up a few passes. And it's going to increase the amount of saturation on that. And that's going to give me that brighter color. And just kind of work around a little bit like that. Went too far there. Let me just undo that. There we go. Maybe one more undo. A little more right there. Okay, so there we go. We've added in a little bit more orange now into the hair. This will look a little bit more interesting. Let's zoom out and see what we have. Looks pretty nice. I like that. Let's pop this off and make it as large as we can here. There we go. So there it is. 
adding in color into a black and white image. And the whole thing depends upon making that careful layer mask and then simply changing the color of the black and white layer. So you're only seeing the colorized version through that hole with the layer mask. One last little thing. If you're not able to get your image to do this pop off and pop on thing, dock and undock, that's easy. Go up to the edit menu, come down to preferences and general, and right there, allow floating documents in export mode. Make sure that's checked and enable floating document window docking. Make sure that's checked. So if those two are checked, general preferences, then you can dock and undock your windows, which makes it much easier to work on your image. So there you go. That's adding color into a black and white image. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.